Hello Legends. On November 1st, Claude introduced PDF support for the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. So at a high level, PDF support means that Claude now works with any standard PDF. It can process text, pictures, charts, and tables in the PDFs that you provide, which means it can be used for analyzing financial reports or understanding the charts and tables in those PDFs, extracting key information from legal documents, translation assistance for documents, or even converting document information into structured formats. So just quickly, an example of PDF support is something like this. I've got a PDF over here, which is the model card addendum. And if I scroll through this, you can see that we have some tables over here with a bunch of information. Scrolling through a little bit more, some more tables, heaps of text. Then I have some graphs as well. So there's tables, visual elements, text, all in this one PDF. Now I can just drag and drop this into the Claude chat and I can chat with this PDF. So I'm just gonna run summarize and hit enter. And now Claude is processing this PDF and answering my question about it. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm actually gonna be exploring the PDF support for API calls. So this is just PDF support using the standard Claude chat. And if we click into the documentation, we can see we have information here about how to use the PDF support when making API calls. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at a bunch of custom code that I wrote up. So we can actually test the PDF support in API calls. We're gonna start off by looking at a standard API call to just have a single interaction. So we're gonna send a PDF with the API call, we're gonna ask a question and get a response back. And then I've got two apps over here that I built out. These are both chat with PDF apps. So this is the chat with PDF app that I built out. We have a document viewer on the left-hand side. We can upload a document. So for example, I'm gonna upload the Claude PDF. And then on the right-hand side, you can have a back and forth conversation with this PDF. This standard version of the app is gonna display a table of all the tokens that we're using when we're having a conversation with this PDF. And then the stream app is a streaming version of the exact same chat with PDF app. So we're gonna be streaming word by word for our responses to have a more realistic kind of chat-like experience. Now, one thing you might be thinking is, okay, if I'm having a lot of back and forth conversations with this one PDF, how many tokens am I gonna be using? So like I mentioned before, we have the token counter on the bottom here. So we're actually using prompt caching for the chat with PDF app. And we're actually caching the PDF on that first API call. And so all subsequent API calls will use that cached version of the PDF, which means our token count is gonna be heavily reduced. So scrolling down just to explain how that works. So you can see here for 3.5 Sonnet, we've got $3 per million input tokens. We've got 375 for cache writes. 30 cents for cache reads, and then 15 for token outputs. So cache writing tokens are 25% more expensive than the base input tokens. So when we're caching our PDF, we're actually consuming 25% more tokens, but when we're reading the cache tokens, it's actually 90% cheaper than base input token. So at a high level, what that means is, if we were just using base input tokens and output tokens without caching anything, each time we upload the PDF in the API call, we would have to spend $3 per million input tokens. But if we actually cache the PDF, we are spending 25% more to actually cache the PDF on that first API call. So instead of $3, we're spending $3.75. But then every time we ask a question to that exact same PDF, we're now only spending 30 cents for input tokens. So this is 90% cheaper for every subsequent call when we use the exact same PDF. So that's what we're gonna see later in this video when I actually demo this standard chat with PDF app. We're gonna see all the tokens consumed here. We're gonna see how the first API call caches the PDF, how the second API call just uses uh, cached read tokens. And all of this code is gonna be available on my Gumroad. You can go there, you can download it for free, or if you find it useful, you can also consider donating. All right, so back in our PDF support documentation, we see when we make an API call, we have to call this specific model in order to have the PDF support available. And then also in order to have PDF support, we also have to pass through this header in our API call. So scrolling down the documentation, just quickly we can see how the PDF support works. And at a high level, when we upload a PDF, each page of the PDF is converted into an image, all the text is extracted from that PDF, and then the image and text is supplied in that API call. So passing the combination of image and text, means that we can still query any visual element from that PDF, like any charts, diagrams, or basically anything else that isn't text, all thanks to passing through the text and image. Scrolling down a little bit more, this is where we have the advice for prompt caching. So this is why we're caching the PDF. And like we saw before, not only is it cheaper long-term if we're sending multiple queries to that same PDF, but the performance improves as well. So if we're caching the PDF, we don't have to process it all again entirely for each API call. So the speed should be just a little bit faster too. Scrolling down a little bit more, 
we can see here we have a maximum file size of 32 megs and also max of 100 pages. And then finally, we come across to a sample API call on how to use the PDF support in the Messages API. So the first API call we're making, I basically took this script and then I transferred across to standard.js. And this is just a basic API call using JavaScript. So in that first API call, we're not actually using the Anthropic SDK. So we're not importing any Anthropic library. We're just using standard JavaScript API call. So to go through what we've done, we're pulling in that Claude PDF, the same one that I showed at the start of this video, which I've just made available in my project folder here. Then we're using that specific model that we requested from the documentation, which is this model here. And then we're passing through that PDF header over here. So Anthropic Beta, PDFs 2024-09-25, and that's that header over here. Then we have a question. So which model has the highest human performance win rates across each use case? Scrolling down a little bit more, and this is how our response is gonna be structured. So the first part of the response is just the response from Claude. And then the second part of the response is just looking at token consumption. All right, the first thing I need to do is I need to get out of this standard folder, which is here. I was just using this to demo the uh, chat with PDF app before. And I have to CD back into the parent folder, which is called Claude. So for me to get out of this, I'm just gonna write CD space dot dot, hit enter. And now you can see my folder changed from standard to Claude which means I left standard and I went into the parent folder Claude. And now I have access to the standard.js file. So I'm just gonna run that file now. I'm gonna call it node standard.js and hit enter. Also, we got our response. I'm gonna bring up the terminal so we can actually view the response. The first section is Claude's response to our question. And then the second section is all the token consumption. So we can see here the input tokens was 32,500. And that's because we uploaded the entire PDF in that one API call. So we were using this specific input token here. So $3 per million token. This version doesn't do any cache reading or writing just yet. I wanted to show you the very basic API call without any caching. So that's what we had over here. This is a combination of the PDF that we import into the API call and a fire scroll up. It also includes this initial first message that we sent. And then the output tokens were all this for the actual response. And our total token consumption was 32,700. All right, so the next thing I wanna show is the standard app. And the standard app is gonna have messaging, but not just a single message, it's actually gonna cache the PDF. So we're gonna have back and forth conversations. We're also gonna have conversation memory. So the actual variable we're building out and passing into the API call contains all the previous messages that we've had with the assistant. And then it's gonna show us cache tokens and token consumption across all those multiple message turns. So to actually run that app, we have to now go back into that standard folder. So in my terminal, I'm gonna write CD and standard. I'm gonna hit enter. And now we can see we left the Claude folder and we dove into the standard folder. Now in the standard folder, just to break this down, we have a public file. And the public file has the index.html, which is all that really nice looking app that we saw on web page before. We have the app.js, which is the primary backend for all the logic that we're running on the app. And then we have a server.js file. And this file is the entry point for our app. So this is actually how we're running the app online. So in order for us to run this app, we actually have to call node server.js. So in my terminal, I'm just gonna write that, node server.js. And now we're running on port 3000. So I'm just gonna open up another web page and go to localhost 3000. There we are, I just typed in localhost 3000. And here is the PDF app. So the first thing I'm gonna do is upload that Claude PDF. Here we go, I can view that PDF, I can scroll down, I can zoom in. And on the right hand side, I've got a little note here saying, cool, the document was uploaded. And on the first API call we make, we're actually gonna be caching the PDF. So now let me just go ahead and ask a question. I'm gonna write summarize and hit enter. Cool, so we have another note here that says the document has been cached for faster responses and also cheaper responses. And then we have the response here. And over here we have our first message that we sent and all the tokens that were consumed. We'll look at that in just a second. Now I wanna send another message so then we can compare message one and message two token consumption. All right, and for my second question, I asked what is the safety of 3.5 Sonnet? And then I had a response here that discusses all the safety stuff, most likely from this section of the PDF. So now zooming into the token consumption. So this is the very first API call we made. So that very first question that I sent you can see we have cache writing tokens of 32,400. And since cache writing tokens are 25% more expensive than base input tokens, we have an equivalent tab over here, which basically says 32,400 increased by 25% is 40,500. And then we had no cache read tokens because we didn't have anything cached. And this is the total cost of that single API call and response. Then for our second question that we asked, we can see we had no cache writing tokens because we've already written in this first reply. 
but we had cache read tokens of 32,474. Once again, the exact same size of this write tokens. But now the cache read tokens are 90% cheaper than base input tokens, which means instead of $3, we're just spending 30 cents. So that's what we see over here. The equivalent tab basically shows instead of 32,400, it's 3.2 thousand. And here you can see the total cost. So the total cost for the first API call, including caching was 12 cents. And the second API call was just over one and a half cents. So there is a massive difference in cost once you cache and for all your subsequent requests. So if you do want to build a chat with PDF app using Claude's new uh, PDF support, you 100% want to do caching. And thankfully, the app that I provide includes that caching built in. Now I want to show you the streaming version. So for the stream response, we're actually using the streaming SDK. So the TypeScript SDK. And this is that Anthropic library. And if I scroll down a little bit, if we were to just use the raw HTTP stream response, so if we were just to write a JavaScript API call and try and use the streaming, it's 100% possible, but it's also much more difficult because the SDK handles a lot of the event stuff for you. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into it too deeply. Just wanted to show you that the streaming version does use the TypeScript SDK for streaming. So now to test this out, let's go across to the stream folder. So I'm gonna hit Control C to exit that app. So to get into the stream folder, first I have to get out of this standard folder, which means I have to go into the Claude folder first, and then I can pop back into the stream. So I'm in standard now, I'm gonna CD and dot dot, so I can go back into the parent Claude folder. And now I can CD into the stream subfolder, so I'm gonna go CD and stream, hit enter, and now you can see I got out of standard into Claude, and then from Claude I went back into stream. Now I'm gonna close the standard folder and open up the stream folder. It's pretty much the exact same layout as before. So in this public folder, we have the index.html and app.js. And then we have the server file that we need to run in order to run that app online. So just like before, I'm gonna go node server.js. All right, and here we go. We're back on the localhost 3000. This is the exact same version of that chat with PDF app, except that this version has the streaming responses. So let's give it a go. Let's upload that Claude PDF. And now let's send our first message. Like before, I'm gonna write summarize and hit enter awesome and this is our streaming response that is super cool so what you might notice is that we don't actually count the tokens like we did in the standard version so what i think is going on is because uh, prompt caching is in beta mode right now and since we're using the streaming response sdk that the events from the streaming don't actually include cache tokens so I did some quick reading on that and I found some sources that basically verify what I'm thinking, but that's no big deal because the standard version of the app actually includes the token consumption for cache read and cache write. So if you do wanna see the cache token stuff, you can see that in the standard app. And then I wanted to also give a cherry on top and build out the streaming version of the app because it's a bit more realistic and more uh, similar to how it is when you're speaking with Claude in the actual Claude interface. But if you're watching this like a week or a month after I posted this video, I think the caching tokens will most likely be able to come through the streaming uh, responses. So you should be able to build out the same kind of token counter if you wanted that as well. Now, just like before, let's go across to the safety section and ask a similar question. All right, I've got safety over here and I've got, what is the safety of Claude 3.5? And I'm gonna hit enter. And there we go, our streaming response, all about the safety once again from this section over here. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, all the code that we went through today is gonna to be available on my Gumroad and I'm gonna have that link in the description of this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel to keep seeing really cool stuff like this, to keep getting free resources. Or if you're a business owner and you want a chat with PDF app, similar to what we saw over here, where we're using the Claude API and we're adding files, we're doing caching, streaming responses. If you want something like this built out a bit more custom for your business, you can get in touch with me. I left my email in the description of this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy your new Claude API that has PDF support. See ya.